Softball Champion. It's the final of the 2024 Max Softball Championship coming to you from the banks of the Hudson River on a beautiful spring day in Poughkeepsie, New York. I'm Jeff Peralta alongside Mike Farr. We're glad to have you along at Gartland Field as the Canisius Golden Griffins take on the Siena Saints. Canisius, they may need her to get some rest. The answer is 390 pitches to this point. First pitch of the championship, grounded up the box and into center field. Bella Pardo wastes no time. A leadoff single for the Saints. It's for Emma Peterson, and then Emma Peterson hitting the ball over the wall. Leadoff hitter on, and then Jocelyn Ulrich awaits on deck. Corners in, bumped is down, handled by Rosie Gomez. Tosses to Emily Alano, covering a successful sack. Payoff pitch, grounded to second. Handled by Alano. There's two away, and the Saints advance Pardo to third. Okay, now here's the chess match, right, Jeff? Peterson. The Hudson River to the right. 3-1 bounces. Fazilari able to hang on to it. That keeps Pardo at third. Sienna with runners at the corners is Geis. Didn't want much of Peterson. And that's about what you might expect. Now that ball trickled a little bit through the Sienna catcher, has done a nice job behind the plate. Oh, and she gets hit again. Silver was flinching as though she might pull back to swing at the ball, and it just rode up and in and hit her. This year, but she's driven in 25. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and miss, strike three. Megan Geis gets out of a bases loaded jam in the top of the first and keeps the Saints. Got on base three out of four times against Niagara with a two-run single and two walks. Line chopped to third is snared by Diana Parker. They call it the hot corner for a reason, one away. Dusty McGee Ross, senior from Cheektowaga, New York. Ground ball through the hole in the right side. Ross says the Griff's first hit of the game. And Christy McGee Ross has done about what you expect her to do this time of year. This is her seventh hit of the championship. Shows Bunt, drops it down to the right of the circle. Fielded by Yemont. The throw gets by Peterson. Christy McGee Ross able to take third. Peterson couldn't come up with the errant throw. Jeff. Another 2 2. Hit high in the air to left. Swinson has it lined up, makes the catch. McGee Ross tags it third, and the Griff strike first. A sack fly and an RBI for Rosie Gomez. With runners in scoring position, she does her job here. Fouled off a lot of pitches. She lofts that one deep enough to left. This is a good play by Swinson, too. She didn't have a play at the plate, so she made a bluff and then got the ball into second. And the biggest part of that... Good in support of her own cause this tournament. That one skied to center. Pardo drifts over, makes the catch, and the inning is over. But... Canisius pushes across the first run of the day. Geis work in the first inning, had to throw 24 pitches before wriggling out of a bases loaded jam. Her first pitch of the second, ticketed to the fence in the right center field alley. It's a stand up double for Diana Parker. To pitch both of those games, Canisius needed to win both of those games to host the championship, otherwise it would have been at the mound. She pitched all 12 innings for the Golden Griffins that day. Zero runs allowed, 22 strikeouts. Geis wins the war. Fletcher swings through the Troy. Strong capital district ties there. Grounded softly to third. Handled by Alano. Two out. Advance Parker to third on the ground out to the right side. And now we turn over the Siena. Line. We started 168 of her 171 career game. Pardo takes snap throw to third. Well snared by Cook. Almost a disaster. This game is probably 1-1. 2-0 to Pardo. Grounded back to the circle. Geis has it, and the inning is over. For the second straight frame, Sienna threatens. Galano Costin, 6-7-8 and eight due to face Alyssa Iman. Cook first pitch swinging. Flies out to center field. One pitch, one out for Alyssa Iman in the home half of the second. Nine preceding it. The team that trailed never even tied. Emily Alano, a one-out base runner. That's the first free pass issued by Iman. Player aboard for Sydney Costin. And Sydney Costin, we got to talk to her after the game yesterday. Certainly playing shortstop but not hitting. 
Costin lays out a great bunt third base side. Parker has it, throw to first in time. They get Costin by a step, but she does her job and moves Alano up a station. Alano at second. There's the bunt. It dies in front of the plate. Fielded by Silver, her throw to first. Pulls Peterson off the bag. Berkey safe. And Casey Bum is out of the Siena dugout to talk about it. Oh, I wonder, and now this umpiring crew is going to get together. Let's get another look. First of all, that bunt's perfect. Second of all. Ooh, field. As you see the reaction there by Gracie Gully of Siena. Kanisha's had not left the field, Jeff, that, that there was a challenge after the call was reversed from safe to out. Kim Griffin is strike two, the count is full. The closest we saw to a dominant Megan Geis was yesterday in the elimination game against Niagara, seven innings of two-run ball. That's ball four. We've seen more often than not in this championship business, we mentioned, 20 strikeouts against just one walk. There's a flare off the bat of Ulrich, and it's Costin with the catch going into short left. A collision with Berkey, but she held on. Nice play by Costin. 2-0. That one is skied right side, but in the park, Cloutier into foul territory makes the catch for the second out. Good pitch by Geis of Maddie Silver, and that is among the worst places to get hit. That's a line drive to center and caught by McGee Brooks. So Geis works around the leadoff walk and in heard their name called. They're trying to go to regionals for the first time in program history. If Canisius wins this one, these teams will do it again. Cloutier, that one's bobbled by Iman and she doesn't have a play. That's what speed will do for you. Cloutier able to take advantage of the fact that Emont did not catch it. Lead a reason for Kipsey at different points throughout the week is McGee Ross on the 3-1, skies it into short left center field. Back is Cummings to make the catch through the first out. And by the way, that's not to say that Sienna doesn't re a couple of steps in front of the base, opens up some room down the line. That's fisted into short center field. It gets down for a base hit. Fielded by Pardo, Cloutier will stop at third, but the Griffs have run Not the way you expect Gianna Fazzolari to get on base. Little jam shot that just found some green grass in center field. Turn the screws on the Siena infield a little bit. Maybe they get two in scoring position quickly. There goes Ferris. And it's a base hit into left field. Cloutier scores. Ferris holds it second. It's 2-0 Canisius on two RBIs by Rosie Gomez. Been a great ball game for Gomez. Everything you want out of your cleanup hitter. She squared that one up. No chance for the Siena defense. And now Gomez thought the Patilli was not going to return to Siena this year, but a unique set of circumstances, and she did is guys with the check swing, and it's caught by Silver who runs it back in. That's nice hustle by Maddie Silver and great awareness. She did. And that's the reason Canisius has a two nothing lead. Ground ball to short, Cummings fields, fires, side retired, but not before the Griffs get another. And after three, Canisius was told to or decided on her own to lay down the ball. Popped into right, Cloutier is there. One out in the top of the fourth. And you know, you look at it, won that game. Geis was taken out after four. 2-2 two -two is grounded. That is stopped by Costin. Throw to first is not in time. Think Cook got her glove on it. Megan Geis, 54 career wins coming into today. Payoff pitch. Ball four. And the Saints have two on with one out for the number nine hitter, McKenzie. That we've seen at times throughout the season, four times. She struck out double-digit hitters. Line drive, base hit to center field. McGee Ross comes up throwing. McCallson coming around throwing play at the plate. Fazzolari can't hold on. It squirts away. And now both runners will move on. As Sienna turns it around now to the top of the order and part of, we're going to get another look. A lot of moving parts in this play. Well-struck ball. As you mentioned, Jeff, 
Very aggressive set. The throw was on time. Fazilari tried to lunge, and when she lunged, she couldn't hold on to it. So Saints threatening to take the lead here. 1-1 one, one to Pardo. That's a line drive. It's down into left center field. Here comes Fletcher. Here comes Swinson. A two-run double for Bella Pardo. And the Saints are in the lead at 3-2. RBI 16 and 17 for Pardo. Her second hit of the game. Her approach has been aggressive. Approaching 80. Very few quick innings in this one. Ball four. First and second for Sienna. Five consecutive Saints have reached. That's two walks and a sacrifice. Weak outs. I don't know if I buy if the bunt's real. Exactly. The 2-1, and that one in the dirt, and it skips past Fazilari, and both runners will move up. It hit the dirt, it sounded like it hit off Faz. Payoff pitch. Ball four. Ulrich draws her sixth walk of the championship. Kim Griffin's going to the circle, and you wonder if that you cannot understate how big of a point this is in this game. Peterson, bases loaded, first offering. Ground ball to short. Costin will come to the plate, and the throw's wild. One run is in. Two runs are in. Sienna leads five to two. Geis got exactly what she wanted, but Costin's throw sailed to the backstop. Kenisha's had the infield in. They were even with the bases. With the players at first and second, it may have been a tailor-made double play ball if they were aligned for it, but I think... Rich walk, and then Peterson with the fielder's choice and the throw away. Giampolo into right center field. Coutier over and makes the catch for the final out, but not before Sienna sends 10 to the plate and scores five. 5-2 five Saints going to the bottom of the fourth. How much space was left? In a way, you create your own baseline depending on where the shortstop is. And well, because Clummings left enough space for Costin to make the play, there was no reason to call her out for contact or interference of errors that she committed. One, a throwing error, trying to get Fazilari on a butt attempt. Another, a ball that popped in and out of her glove with the speedy Cloutier running to first. And now she's pitching with a lead for the first time, and well, she looked good getting her first strikeout. Because now you don't think about the bunt as much with two strikes. Swinging, and that's a line drive caught by Giampolo. Throw to first in time. Alano doubled off. And the Saints celebrate as they get out of the fourth. A shutdown of four. It will be seven, eight, and nine in the Siena order two up. Diana Parker, Michaela Fletcher, and Mackenzie Swinson against Megan Geis. First pitch swing by Parker. That's a line drive right into the glove of Berkey for out number one. Lynching is a natural reaction to not get hurt. Just misses, and Fletcher draws a one-out walk. Second straight time, she's drawn a free pass. And guys, 15 for 15 in stolen base attempts. Swinson shows punt. It's a good one. Fielded by Cook. Throw to first, just in time. Score a sacrifice, 5-3 in any inning today. 2-2. Two -two. That's grounded right side. Alano has to make a quick play. She does. The scoop with the glove. It was the only choice she had, and she makes the play for the final out. State CIA Rookie of the Year hit 371 there, stealing 38 bases, scoring 56 runs in her lone season. Called strike three. Then scored on the sacrifice fly by Rosie Gomez after the bunt by Fazilari. Call strike three. Absolutely massive out as Iman. Ah, they're the two that you really think a Kanisha's comeback would start with. And Fazilari with a single to center field to keep this inning going. Jeff, right before you said that, was looking at the scorecard, trying to count the... and would be the potential tying run. Fazilari, the runner at first, reaching on the two-out single, 2-2. Two -two. Grounded, left side, Parker, fields, fires. And that retires the side in the bottom of the fifth. After five, Sienna. Six outs away from their first MAC championship. Cummings grounds it to short. Costin fields. Low throw dug out by Gomez, and there's one away. Two of those walks occurred in the fifth inning. 
and led to run. Thrown away, leading to two more scoring. Comes one of the Saints' big backs. First pitch to Ulrich, lofts it into shallow left. Berkey coming on to make the catch. And there's quickly two away. Long that after this pitch. 0-1. Silver hits it high in the air to left. Berkey's got plenty of room, and the inning is over. Megan Geis works around the two-out walk. We're through five and a half. Sienna leads by three. Getting to Iman a little bit, but Iman has really settled down. Popped into shallow left. Cummings under, there's one away. And again, imperative. But that's what she does. That one grazed the batter. Cook hit on the back knee, and Canisius has a base runner. Just as soon as we laud her control, one slips a little too far inside. Well, you know, we could. Of how to pitch. Brushes her back, throws another one inside. It's popped weakly to second. Giampolo makes the grab, there's two gone. Iman coming into today, we mentioned all tipped by Delaney for Niagara on Thursday, they end up being with a single. Costin hits one deep to left, and it's out of there! She gives up two runs on a ball that leaves the yard, and all of a sudden, Kenesha's back within one. Second homer of the tournament for the shortstop, Sydney Costin. Seniors, right, Jeff? Moments like this, you know, it could be the last game. Costin gives it a ride. She's homered in back-to-back -back games now, and just when you thought that Sienna might have been Peterson at first, now you're in the speed part of the order. Berkey bunts. It's fielded by Parker. Throw to first. Not in time. Berkey beats it out. And now Kanishas turns it over to the top of the order. Cloutier swings away, sends it to left center field. Pardo's there, and that ends the inning, but not before a two-run blast by shortstop Sidney Costin. 1-1. Jim Polo ropes it to center. McGee Ross coming in, and it falls in front of her. Jim Polo makes a wide turn, but will retreat to first. It's a had in the bat. This is what her role's been, and what a time for it. First pitch to Diana Parker is bunted to the right side of the circle. That's well handled by Gomez, who fires to Alana when the pressure is on. Fletcher swings at the first pitch, puts it in the air to left. Berkey tracks it down, two away. Talking about George Cooper, the Santa Cruz. Winston. First pitch grounder to short. Juggled by Costin, picks it up and puts it in her pocket. So the bobble allows Swinson to reach. If she could find a gap here, she can give her team insurance. Grounder up the middle into center field. Here comes Faraday. The throw to the plate, not in time. The Saints have an insurance run. Fazilari to second. That throw is late. Swinson dives back in. And the Saints, with a little breathing room, it's 6-4 Siena. Bella Pardo, one of the greats in this program. That was going to be a tough play for McGee Ross. She made about as good of a throw as she could have under those circumstances. In the sixth. Oh, one. Cummings lines it off the glove of Alano at second and into shallow right. That allows Swinson to score as the Saints take a 7-4 lead. Alano climbed the ladder. We'll get a look at this, Jeff. And then once that deflected off of Love, she didn't have a play anywhere. Ask for more from your leadoff hitter. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. But Sienna tacks on two more. And they've got a three-run cushion going to the last of the seven. But Casey Bump wants this to be Alyssa Iman's game. Ross lays down a bunt. It's a beauty. All the grips, or excuse me, the Saints can do is hope it rolls foul, and it doesn't. As Christy McGee Ross lays down a perfect bunt for a leadoff no, no. single. Today in an elimination game against Niagara. What does Iman give her? 3 1. Fazilari grounds it up the box and into center field. Ross and Fazilari do their job. The first two out for the Griffs, and the tying run comes second. Fazilari at first. Gomez hit. The bases are loaded. 
with no one out, and here comes Megan Geis and spot. Another 2-2. Two -two. Sky to the left side. Will it stay in the yard? Yes. Swinson makes the catch. Not deep enough for the runners to tag, and there's one away. And there was absolutely no way. Can with nine plate appearances. In the air to left. Swinson coming on, Cummings coming out. And Cummings makes the grab again, not deep enough for the runners to home runs during the regular season. In the air, right center field, tricky play, and Pardo can't make the diving stop, it gets all the way to the wall. Two runs are in, the third is held, high is held at third, but the Canisius Golden Griffins have made it a one run ball game here in the last of the seven. Oh, and I'll tell you what, Kim Griffin waited as long as she could to make the decision on whether to hold high or send high. Pardo lays out. Kim Griffin, look at where she is at that point. She's trying to get the best angle that she could. Well, Kim Griffin might have scored the tying run. Fazilari are in. They need one more. 3-2. Swung on, hit in the air to right, drifting back, Fletcher, it is holding! Fletcher makes the catch, and the Saints march on to the NCAA tournament for the first time. Siena, champions of the MAC in 2024. Costin gave it a ride, but Fletcher got there. She goes over the shoulder, approaching the fence. And the Griffs fall one run short of tying the game. How about it, number 24? A grab that makes Willie Mays proud. Michaela Fletcher, a web gem to win it for the Siena Saints. And look what it means to the Saints and their fans. Saints manager Casey Bum has her team atop the mountain for the first time. They came oh so close against Canisius two years ago, but they lost 